Hey everybody, my name is Ted Forbes. Welcome back to another episode of The Art of Photography. Uh, today we've got a very geeky topic. We're gonna talk about digital file management or digital asset management. Um, I think this is kind of geeky and I thought, well, maybe it's a little boring. I thought, no, I think this is important because this is something that we all have to deal with in some way, shape, or form. I know I talk a lot about film on here, but I still have a lot of digital files. I have scans of everything. Uh, I shoot a lot of digital work as well. Um, for those of you out there who make your living as photographers or with photography, this is extremely important. Um, losing your images would be it would be a disaster. Um, it, you, they need to be secure and safe. But I think even on an amateur level, I think having our photos Photos are it's important. Having raw files when we when we can, and having uh, backups of the Photoshop files, and I mean, it, there's a lot of data that we generate. Um, and anyway, I want to talk about a book today. I'm going to put a link to this in the show notes. This is a book by a gentleman named Peter Crow, I believe is how you say his last name. K-R-O-G-H. And uh, Peter wrote this book called The Damn Book. And DAM stands for Digital Asset Management. Uh, this is really the best thing that I've ever found on this subject. Everything is in detail. This is a little bit of the Bible for this kind of thing. And it's very encyclopedic in nature. And uh, I think it's incredible. Um, there's a lot they've talked about in here as far as metadata, being able to retrieve your images, and I'm not going to go into all of it, obviously, in a podcast that only lasts a few minutes. Um, however, uh, I'll put a link to this in the show notes. It's highly recommended. Uh, just get it. Um, you'll refer to it over and over again. But one of the things I'll share with you in here uh, that Peter talks about is when you have files, um, you know, if you're if you're just shooting pictures and taking your digital files and throwing them on your hard drive for your laptop or your desktop or whatever, uh, you are headed for disaster at some point. Um, when it comes to hard drives, a friend of mine once told me there are two kinds of hard drives in the world. There are those that have failed and those that haven't failed yet. They all fail at some point. They don't have long lifespans. They're not built to last you know, uh, decades. They're built, you know, to last a couple years at, at best. And uh, that's just a simple fact of life. And it's kind of scary when you consider how, you know, dependent we all are on digital technology now. Um, so anyway, he talks about something that you can talk about called the 321 concept. And the concept is, is that if you have a digital file, it does not exist unless you have three copies of this file. Uh, two of them must be on different media. Is that correct? And one of them needs to be in a different location. And the reason that is, uh, media can fail, a hard drive can fail, a CD can, can go out eventually and not work. Um, I've had that happen, that's a drag. You pull CDs out of the closet, you finally found an image that you've spent a couple hours trying to figure out where it was, and it is not readable anymore because the CD's just gone corrupt. Uh, that's a drag, <laughs> I've been there. Um, so anyway, so he's saying, you know, two different kinds of media, three copies, two different kinds of media, and then you need to have one off-site. Um, so, you know, maybe you have, uh, two different hard drives with a copy on each and a CD, so there's two different types of media. Um, two hard drives and one CD, but it's only two different types of media. And then you take one of the hard drives and you send it somewhere else, send it to your mom's house, send it, you know, whatever. Uh, then you have everything in different places. And I think this makes the most sense naturally because if you have one in a different location, not only do you possibly have a backup in the event of something failing, but if it's in a different location, you also have a backup in case of a natural disaster. So if you had a fire in your studio or your home, uh, if you had flood, water damage, uh, you have an earthquake, I mean, God forbid any of that happen, it could. And <clears throat> you want to protect, and location is the way you do that, uh, to protect against that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> there are several online solutions that have become increasingly more popular. There's things like Smug Mug, and those guys are great. Uh, I know people who use Flickr as that kind of a service. Um, those are okay. They all cost money to some degree, and really Flickr's not designed for that. I guess it's better than nothing. Um, it depends on how much also you trust Yahoo uh, to keep it in business, uh, because who knows where all that's gonna go. And I, I don't know, I mean, that, that's a possibility. Uh, Smug Mug's another good possibility, but it's a lot more expensive to pay for. And uh, you know, all those things end up costing money in the long run. Now, what I want to talk about is this. I have a concept in mind, and it doesn't address all the things that Peter talks about in his book, because not only um, do you have to have a plan for where these files are going to live, uh, but you also need to have a plan to be able to access them. <clears throat> and this is kind of the hard part, and we use what's called metadata. And so, you know, if you have Adobe Photoshop and it comes with Bridge, and you know, you can assign keywords and stuff in there. The problem that I've found with metadata, and you can do this in Lightroom, Aperture, whatever you're using, the problem with metadata is this, you gotta do it. You gotta get in there and you gotta tag stuff. And you know, I didn't always have time, you run out of energy, I'm really bad about it, I you know, will, will admit. And some, sometimes it takes me longer to retrieve things because I, you know, what keywords did I use? I don't have an assistant, uh, you know, I'm not making enough money to do that. So anyway, so 
I have an idea for something that I want to try, and I will talk about this. Um, if you haven't heard of Amazon Web Services, um, I think this is pretty interesting. Amazon launched um, AWS, Amazon Web Services, several years ago. Um, and basically what it is, is it's this huge infrastructure that Amazon runs uh, that you can do all kinds of things with. Uh, you can use it as storage. You can actually build web applications on it. Um, there's all these things built into it for monitoring. You can run very advanced setups if you know what you're doing um, very easily. Uh, the storage stuff's dead simple. I think anybody could learn how to do that. Up to this point, their storage has been a, a program called S3. Uh, and S3, uh, which is their simple storage format, it works great. It's very inexpensive. I've used it before on things. You could do things like host your podcast there, um, whatever, uh, put your digital files there. Um, the great thing about Amazon is you only pay for what you use. So if, for instance, you know, let's say you have several gigabytes of files in there one month and you only have one in there the next month, you would only pay for what you're using at whatever time. So it makes it a really easy platform. I, believe me, I am reeling this back around to storage. Um, it is very robust. Um, they've made some mistakes along the line, but it's gotten very good lately. Amazon's entire store, um, their online shopping stuff, runs on their own stuff now. They eat their own dog food, so to speak, which I think is great. Um, I've worked on it through my, my museum gig quite a bit uh, recently. I've uh, been very impressed with it so far and very impressed with the cost on it because it is very uh, agreeable with the wallet, if you will. Um, it, it, let's put it this way. There, if, if you didn't know, okay, here's, here's a couple examples. Um, there have been several small companies in the last couple of years that have started up that have become internet phenomena, if you will. Um, like companies like Instagram is one of them, Dropbox is another. Those are all built on Amazon Web Services. And the great thing about it is all that infrastructure is there. It's affordable, you're only paying for what you use. And those companies can literally just be small companies and then outsource all that infrastructure on the server backend side um, to Amazon. And like for instance, Dropbox, which I use all the time. Uh, Dropbox is such a handy tool and it runs on Amazon more or less. Uh, I believe it's still S3 that that's running on. And it's amazing. I didn't think it would scale very well. I haven't seen much trouble with it, and a lot of people use Dropbox, so uh, I've never had any technical issues with it. So anyway, their infrastructure is really good. All this to come around. They have a new product that they announced, um, oh, maybe two or three weeks ago, uh, which you can find out if you go to aws.amazon.com, and I will uh, post a link in here. Um, you have to sign up for an account. It's pretty easy to do. But they have a new product called Amazon Glacier. And Amazon Glacier is basically, it's designed to be storage that, oh, it's really... I think it would be great for like a business or something where you're putting tax returns and filings and just stuff that you have to hang on to but you don't access very much. And that's the whole idea with Glacier is that you would put things there that you might need to get to once in a while but you're not having a lot of up and down traffic with it, you know. Um, so the, the, the um, upside to that is they can provide storage that's very robust, very sound and they don't have to worry as much about the bandwidth. So, you know, if you have a really big file, it might take a little bit, down, lo little bit longer to download. But, you know, I think the whole idea is that it's stuff you wouldn't need to get to very often. If it's something you need to access frequently, they've got S3 and it's built for that. But Glacier's really interesting. And here is the, the, uh, the most interesting thing about it, is that the pricing on it is one cent per gigabyte monthly. One cent. And so, uh, that's US dollars, but th that's amazing to me. Um, if I have 10 gigabytes, it costs me 10 cents a month. That's a lot of data. And granted, they're assuming you're not going to access it very much because there's, there's fees for transfers that you know are cheap if you're just putting stuff up. So kind of what I was thinking about, I was looking through Amazon Glacier finally today, and I'm going to try it, and I will report back, and we'll do some more podcasting on this. Um, one thing that I think would be an easy, affordable way to deal with storage uh, you know, right now for a lot of people if you went with Amazon Glacier, and it would require a little bit of workflow, okay, so let's say you're in Lightroom or you're, you work in Photoshop or whatever it is that you're doing, Aperture. And, okay, so I've also talked about Bluehost on here where you can host a website. Now, Bluehost is not built for hosting major amounts of data. Even though they say unlimited data, um, it needs to be used in your website. So if you're just throwing, you know, big zip archives of files or, or movies or whatever, if it's not part of your website, they, they, they can't bust you on that. So it's really not built for that. But... What I'm thinking is, is what if the workflow was, you take a set of images you're working on, you're done with them, you're ready to archive them. Uh, what you would do is you would generate the master file, which is you know maybe a Photoshop document, a TIFF file, camera raw, whatever it is that, that you're dealing with, and then a smaller JPEG that's just a reference file. 
keep all the file names uh, consistent. And we'll, we'll talk about this as we get into it. Then what you do is you put your big files on Amazon Glacier and they're gonna live there. And assuming you're probably not gonna need them very often. If it's an image you print a lot or need access to the master file for whatever reason, keep a copy on your hard drive, but, but go ahead and archive it. So, you, you know, two places. Um, and then take all your JPEGs and then build a quick website using those. And I have a solution that, um, when I did my personal website for my own photography portfolio, which is the URL, again, all these will all be in the show notes, but it's focus.nu. And basically, um, uh, I do a lot of PHP work and um, HTML, that kind of thing. And I built something that literally is a website and the whole content management is nothing but an FTP app. So basically I open that up, I throw the files on the server, it, it puts them in galleries based on what the folder name is and you can see the file names. So, you know, put your stuff in Glacier that's really important that you need access to, not often, but it's important enough you need to back it up. And then keep those JPEGs on a website that you host on Bluehost. And, you know, shoot, for under 20 bucks a month here, we, we've got a pretty good program going to store data. Um, way under 20 bucks a month. In fact, I think, well, let's see, a, a terabyte, okay, so a terabyte would be 10 bucks a month on Amazon Glacier, a penny, a, a gigabyte, roughly. Um, I, the, the math doesn't quite work out, but it's, it's close to $10 a month. And the Bluehost, I think, is what, $5 a month? So here we are at 15 a month, and we've got a pretty good solution. Um, I think I would need to work on it. Anyway, I'll come back to this, and I'm just kind of throwing this out there. I want to put the links in here. You guys can think about it. If anybody has experience with Glacier that's that's contrary to what I'm talking about, Glacier's brand new. I did go through the service highlights on the homepage here, and it's very important. Uh, it's very low cost. We talked about a, a one cent a gig. Uh, it's secure. Uh, they use SSL uh, transfer, 256-bit, um, etc. That may, may or may not be important to you. Uh, the durability is important. Amazon Glacier is designed to provide average annual durability of 99.99999999. 99% for the archive, for an archive. The service redundancy stores data in multiple facilities on multiple devices within each facility. To increase durability, Amazon Glacier synchronously stores your data across multiple facilities before returning success on uploading archives. Unlike traditional systems, blah, 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 which require laborious data verification and manual repair, Glacier performs regular systematic data integrity checks and is built to be automatically self-healing. This means your files are safe, folks. Uh, that means they're storing them in different locations and on different servers, and uh, they're monitoring for uh, data consistency and in integrity. So, uh, pretty amazing. Um, and obviously, it's scalable. So, you know, if you're doing this as a career, I mean, obviously, you're making money on your images, they're worth saving. Still, this is so cheap. Um, you know, I don't know why this wouldn't work. The things it doesn't address, according to things like the Dan book, which was written long before Amazon Glacier ever came out, it doesn't address metadata, it doesn't address, um, you know, th there's, there's more issues to it than this, but I think for a simple solution, and I have people ask me from time to time, you know, I need something. Uh, do I get a Drobo? Do I get this? Do I get that? Do I just get some hard drives? I've done all that stuff, and it works pretty well, but it doesn't, super secure all your files all the time and to buy a Drobo up front. I mean, you're going to spend probably around $800 just to get into that US. And so for much less, you can you can deal with Amazon. And you know, if it didn't work out, you could figure something out, out later and you're not out of a lot of money. This is amazing. I mean, it's designed obviously for companies and businesses that are going to have petabytes of data, but it's scalable completely. So, I mean, you can sign up for an account, keep one gigabyte of, of images on there and they're stored and they bill you a whopping penny every month. So it's pretty amazing. Anyway, a little bit about file management today. I wanted to go ahead and address. Um, I know we've been on a roll with Darkroom and a bunch of other things, and I keep many things juggling on this show. But anyway, I thought thought that would make a good video topic for today. So anyway, uh, if you guys have any comments on that, any thoughts, anybody has any experience with something like Amazon Glacier, I am going to try it, and I will report back on this whole system of archiving, uh, which is pretty important. And it's, it's the kind of thing where it's pretty boring to get into this stuff, but it's so important to everybody that it's like we all want just a system that works and is affordable and makes sense and it's not hard to use or anything. So I'll report back on this. Uh, if you have any comments on Glacier or um, you know, any other ideas, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people use things like Carbonite for backup, which are fine, you know, but they cost more than a gig, uh, penny gig. So anyway, but leave comments and show notes, whatever, wherever you're watching this, and we'll talk about it more in the future. Anyway, guys, once again, this has been The Art of Photography. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.